Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sean, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the process that I use to create my rhinestone transfer. So I've shown you my steps that I use when I'm creating my rhinestone templates. So now I'm gonna show you the next steps as far as creating your transfer once you have your template, whether you're creating your own or you're purchasing one from my website, which I have will have linked down below in the description box. And if you would please uh, subscribe to this channel as well as like and share this video, I would greatly appreciate it. So I do have um, a beginner friendly rhinestone template creation video, and I'll link that somewhere up here in the cards for you to click on. And you can go back to that video after this one. And I'll also make sure to link into the, the description box as well. And that way, if you're interested in creating your own templates, then you'll know how to. So I'm going to go over all the supplies that I have here. These are items that you will need when you're creating your own rhinestone transfers. So for starters, you have to have some type of rhinestone template, whether you make it yourself or you purchase one. So you'll want to make sure you already have your template cut out and ready to go. Um, you'll also need hot fix tape. I normally buy mines by the roll. Um, I already have mines cut off that I'm going to use after I create my or after I brush my rhinestones on. And in order to make your rhinestone templates, you will need rhinestone flock. Um, you can Google this. They sell it on Amazon. If you're new, I would suggest getting the Amazon brand of rhinestone flock. Otherwise, I would suggest the rocket flock. And I'll also have that information in the description box as well. Um, you'll also need your hot fix rhinestones. I'm going to be using Crystal AB SS10 rhinestones for this. Most rhinestone templates will be a size SS10 is kind of the standard unless maybe you're making something like um, a hat like um, this template here is I use SS uh, SS3 <laughs> rhinestones for this one so I did go smaller on this but because it looked a lot cleaner and neater especially because I was putting this particular image onto a hat but the standard is a size SS10 or a 3mm um, I also have some tweezers. That's just in case after you finish brushing, if some stones don't fall into your holes, then you'll just take your tweezers and kind of fill in those missing spaces. Um, scissors, that's just going to be needed to cut your hot fix tape. Um, you'll also need some brushes. These are just painter's brushes. You can pick these up at Walmart, Target, um, Home Depot, Lowe's, any hardware store, some, something like that. They're only a few bucks. And they usually come in a pack like this. And this one also has, it'll have a replacement in there as well. And these last a really long time. And then you will need some type of flat or smooth surface to lay your rhinestone templates on. If you don't have a big enough work area, one option would be is a dry erase board. I use this mini one for smaller templates. And then I also do have a bigger dry erase board for my larger images. And I just use some painter's tape around because this one kind of had some spacing in between there and my stones would get stuck. So that's why the blue painter's tape is on here. So that's just some options for you in case you don't have a smooth service surface. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. First, I'm going to peel the backing off of my template and put that off to the side as well. And then I'm going to just lay this down. And you want to make sure that it is completely stuck to whether you're using a table or your dry erase board. You want to make sure that it is completely flat. Now what I like to do is just, I just pour a bunch of stones. I'll brush them up when I'm finished, whatever I don't use. And I just pour my stones all over my template and then just start brushing. Because this is a larger template, I'm going to use my larger brush. Normally on smaller templates, I'll use my smaller brush. And then, so you would just be basically going through 
and kind of brushing like in a circular type of motion to get the stones to start falling off into the holes. And I'll kind of speed past this part and then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, so I'm back. I have my stones pressed on. I did have to go in and fill in some stones or just add them in with my hand one by one. It wasn't that many. This one brushed in really good. So now I just, I'm doing a double check. Sometimes you might have extra stones and you don't want to press or create your transfer and then press it onto your item and have those extra stones there. Excuse me, because once you do press these templates or I'm sorry, these transfers onto your garment is permanent. So I just like to go through and double check and see if anything is overlapping, if there's any spaces that I did miss. And there is one right here on the D. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that one in. And then I'm going to just keep double checking here, making sure everything is good. Okay, so everything looks good. Everything is filled in. I don't see any extra stones anywhere. And another thing that I noticed in case you do miss a stone, it happens looking at these stones for a period of time can just like make your eyes just do weird things. So sometimes once you put on your hot fix tape, you'll notice, oh, there's one right there. And then once you peel up your tape, you can just use your tweezers to remove that extra stone in case that happens. So I'm gonna just go ahead and pour my stones back into my jar here. And set that off to the side. And so now I'm gonna grab my piece of hot fix tape that I already have cut out and I'm going to peel the tape off from the backing. And there's many ways you can do this. Um, some people like to just place it in the middle and lay it down. I found that doesn't work for me. I seem to always shift it or move it or something happens. So normally what I do is I start from the side and then I lay it over. So I'm going to just place mine right on the edge and press it down to my surface, to my table here, and make sure that it is sticking really good. And then what I'll do from there is just go ahead and lay it down. And then I'll start rubbing my stones. Another thing that I do use is one of these here. And you don't have to worry about the stones moving once you have your tape down. Um, it's basically going to stick to the tape. I'm just making sure that there's enough pressure so that way when I go to peel my tape up, all my stones will stick. Now you can just use your hands. Just use a pretty firm pressure if um, you're going to be using your hand. You can do that too. That's just fine. I just found using this works good because it gives the pressure that I need. So then I'm gonna go ahead and I like to peel up both corners here. And then I just slowly peel back. That, case, that way, in case some of your stones don't stick, you could just lay your template back down, press on that stone and it'll be stuck to your tape. So just take your time when you're peeling it up, kind of scanning your template making sure all the stones are being picked up and this one picked up great so then i'm gonna carefully lay that down get my backing and just place that right over the transfer and then i'm gonna just press that down 
and just a light pressure. You don't have to press it down too firmly. And then there's your rhinestone transfer. So then the next steps, you would just go ahead and heat your heat press up to 340 degrees. And I set my time at 40 seconds. So 340 degrees for 40 seconds. If you're pressing this onto a t-shirt, I do suggest putting a Teflon sheet inside of your shirt. That way, when you press your transfer and that glue gets activated, that's on the back of the stones. If it goes through, it won't stick to your, or it won't have your shirt sticking together all the way through as far as that glue seeping through your um, top layer of your shirt. So just put a Teflon sheet in there and then I just kind of um, pull that Teflon sheet out or kind of lift my shirt and pull it out in case anything does get stuck to it. Um, another tip that I wanna give is that after I do my first press, and then I would peel my hot fix tape up off of my shirt. Then I would go back and cover my design with some butcher paper and then do another press for about 10 or 15 seconds. It's kind of like a reassurance press just in case, you know, um, some of the stones didn't activate or whatever the case, just to make sure those stones are adhered permanently to your garment. So those are just a couple tips that I've noticed have helped me. Give them a try and let me know what you think. So we went from this to this. And once you have your templates cut out and you start getting used to brushing the stones on in the process, it only takes all of maybe 15 minutes from creating your template, or uh, from using your template to create your transfer to press. And then you're good to go. So please let me know if this video was helpful. If you have any questions or want me to do any videos on any other process as far as rhinestone transfers, templates, whether it's uh, creating them, pressing them, or maybe pressing them on hats or different items like that, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to make a video for you guys. So I'll check you all out in the next video. Thank you for watching. See you next time.